All right, welcome back to Kingwin Pro League, where we're just done casting the first of two matches between Brian Kibler and one of his opponents. He's just lost uh, 0-3 versus Thais. That was a really, bl like, huge blowout. Although I have to say some of the decks that Kibler brought were felt a bit experimental. Like, well, rather, the Druid deck felt a bit experimental, um, more so than anything else. Yeah, um, it was, of course, a Dragon deck, and I'm sure Kibler probably doesn't think that that deck is the best deck in the world, but, you know, if he wins with it, that's really nice. He wins with a dragon deck, and it just brings more attention to himself. It brings uh, more attention to his dragon master name, right? Yeah, he just needs one win, right? That's the typical thing. Like, as I said before, if somebody brings Rand win win once to a tournament event and wins one game with a random priest deck with mind games, that's enough. Like, you don't need to win every single match. So sometimes it's just about bringing a little bit of a fun flavor to everything. And in Elite yeah. format, it you know, your entire tournament life is not necessarily on the line as a result of bringing that. Yeah. Plus, I'd like to make apologies for the Blackwing Technician because it's actually not that bad, even without the entire roster of dragons available. It's just very draw-dependent. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, uh, so unfortunately, like, in the Conquest format, you're really punished for bringing one bad deck. Uh, for yeah. example, in the Sea Story Cup that happened over the weekend, the Ud, he was doing really well in the tournament, but uh, he brought Control Hunters in the tournament. Yeah, th th that deck Torda went or something. Yeah, Torda, I know, yeah, man. Torda. Everything was great, but that one deck. Um, but it was cool. There was a thing death, and it seemed flavorful. It had the bit. It's just that, like, as a player, when you play this, you just feel miserable because every time you draw something, you're like. I'm missing that other card to make this work so much better. And you're always like one card away from being super functional. Um, so you just like, uh, it's missing yeah. that bit of fun, uh, right? When Toyota was playing that uh, that deck, he he always drew a card and was like, hey, this isn't a wolf rider. Where are my wolf riders? <laughs> <laughs> That's true, though. Like, you just feel like if I had just substituted everything in there for face hunter cards, I'd probably be winning right now. Um, but unfortunately, you know, that's the drawback of trying to play Control Hunter in a metagame that doesn't, I mean, I guess in the context, that doesn't really support it. There have been some successful experiments, but it's not a deck that's widely recognized and um, even good. I mean, somebody did make a post recently on this month about reaching Legend with Control Hunter, you know, with double Steam Weedle, one Snipe, one Snake Trap. Um, like, but this, it's, it feels like it's the odd one out more so than anything else. Oh, it's true. And you know what? Uh, how else you can reach Legend? That's by watching the Kingwin for Charity tournament, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Smooth. Uh, yeah, gotta love those transitions, and it'll feature a lot of players that you know, like uh, Hype, Dog, Egg Cop, Ties of Time, Tice, Show, Forsen, for example. But it also features a lot of newer players onto the scene. Players like uh, Jab, even though he's a very seasoned player, you probably don't hear from him much. Uh, players like. Uh, uh, Ekta and Olech from lesser known teams. Um, they're from a team called ESC Punchline. Uh, player named players like Muzzy, who always does really well on the NA ladder, but he doesn't hasn't he hasn't gotten a huge chance to show himself. Um, besides the winning Pinnacle Four, of course. So yeah, really which nice is like the biggest him. achievement. Yeah, so really nice to see him like coming onto the scene. Like all these new faces are always um, really refreshing. Yeah, and it's going to be nice for KPL Season 2 as well because we're going to have, you know, each group that we have currently in the Kingwin Pro League. Well, you know, we have 10 players in each of them, 9 in the Alliance because Masan dropped out. But 5 of those spots in each group are going to be open to qualifiers. So in effect, uh, in Season 2, we'll have 10 potentially new faces in the scene entering from the qualifier. And that should be really exciting because I can't wait to see... Uh, you know, there's a lot of people on ladder who do exceptionally well, but don't really get the tournament presence that they're looking for. And this is really the unfortunate part is Hearthstone's tournament scene is at times, and it's been criticized by a lot of people, you know, it feels restricted because of a lack of, uh, or rather because of the invitational format. And Blizzard is trying to tackle this by incentivizing an open qualifier format by giving BlizzCon points to people who get invited to those tournaments. So. The the idea of you know purely invitational tournaments is falling out of favor with the community in general, and I mean season two of King One Pro League should be probably the next best thing as far as opening up new blood. Yeah, I was, I always love tournaments that are more uh, a more open based rather than invitational based. So I really applaud King One for um, going towards 
more players falling out of the league and allowing for more players from the open tournaments to qualify. So yeah, initially it was that. only three players, so now we you know opened up even more slots. So that should be really cool. That being said, we've had the classes from all the from the two next players. Kibler is going to be playing Hunter, Drew, and Priest, uh, and Fresar is going to be playing Mage, Rogue, and Warlock. Have you noticed how few times the classes overlap today? Have you that's noticed? True. Yeah, I guess that's true. I think that might be because in the Kingwin League format, players are trying to counter each other as much that they don't pick the same classes. Like, um, when I see like just standard tournaments like the Kingwin Pro League, uh, the Kingwin for Charity event, for example, tomorrow, the players will be bringing the best decks against the field. So I suspect in that format you'll be seeing more druids more uh more rogues more hunters more mages like those are the standard classes right yeah the but, four standards yeah but when players are trying to like counter each other and snipe each other you're going to be seeing weird classes like priest and warrior for example yeah well i do like that to be honest like the fact that we're seeing non like you know symmetrical matchups is really interesting and conquest format lends itself pretty well to that now mage rogue and warlock versus hunter druid and priest what deck do you think either of these players might have been targeting? Now, I don't know if Kibler scouts his opponents very much. Um, I don't know if he just, you know, brings decks that he feels are good and tries to pilot them the best he can, or if he actually makes a lot of scouting efforts as far as trying to pinpoint his opponents on specific strategies. Yeah, I feel like, uh, like, Fresner I don't know as much about, but Kibler is known for playing decks like a Mech Mage, Druid, and Priest. And I think the most targetable deck out of those decks is Priest, because... Yeah. Uh, it has some really bad matchups, such as Rogue, as we can see from Fezzer's lineup, and such as Warlock from Fezzer's lineup, if the Warlock is like a handlock, for example. Yeah, even the Mage, if it's Freeze Mage, could be a big problem, unless, of course, Alex Straza comes out and you have an answer uh, out of the Death Lord, of course. But, like, he's he is running a heal bot. So that does make Alex Straza a bit less threatening, but nonetheless, with Emperor Thorson, it makes the Freeze Mage burst even more deadly if that deck is played properly, where you just set up the perfect Emperor turn and then just burst the Priest down, no matter how much health he's recovered from the uh, the heal bot. So it's gonna be it's gonna come down to you know what Frezar's Mage is, because otherwise, I feel like his lineup is very well very well tailored against the Priest deck. Uh, we have the first deck selected from both players. Kibler will be selecting the Hunter deck. Meanwhile, Frezar will be selecting Warlock. So Kibler, I would definitely say he has a, sig a significant advantage. Uh, both styles of Hunter, mid-range or face Hunter, they are said to be slightly favored against uh, Handlocks or Demon Handlocks. We're not sure if Frezar is playing one of those classes but or one of those decks because he could be playing Zoo for all we know, but yeah. it's more likely than not that Frezar was targeting Priest, and he yeah. will be bringing Handlock and, uh, or Demon Handlock, like Tice did before him. Yep. So we'll be going to the game very shortly. Now, Hunter could be face Hunter. Kibler does like to put a lot of pressure on his opponents. You know, it's a play style that he favors very much, and I feel like face Hunter is one of the decks that does that, I think just does it best. Um, it's less beatdown oriented than something like Druid. Like, it doesn't take... Um, you know, it doesn't put a 4-6 down and beat you for 4 and then you have to remove 6 health. It just throws stuff at your face until you keel over and die. Uh, but it does put a lot of pressure on you. And I think Kibler might be playing that face hunter. I've seen him play that exact deck recently in the tournament. Yeah, I feel like uh, one disadvantage that Kibler has going to this uh, league is that he's uh, basically to find out what he's going to play against you. You pretty much uh, type in www.brianekibler.com. Check, check his recent articles and uh, check what decks he likes to play and just like make decks to counter that. And I do believe he did have a face hunter write up, face hunter deck write up on his website, but no mid range hunter deck. So okay. more likely than not, you're going to be thinking, okay, this is face hunter. Quick thoughts about quick shots. I remember I, about quick shot. I remember that he wrote an article on that. Because when I saw quick shot initially, I was like, that's going to be like a one of in every face hunter deck. Um, and it turns out, do people even run it? I think it's still run as a one-of, perhaps, over Glaivezuka, because, you know, too many weapons can clunk up your hand a little bit. The funny, th the funny thing you brought that up, I actually agreed with you that it was going to be a one-of in Phase Hunter, but mm -hmm. actually what I'm actually seeing is it's either a two-of or a zero-of. People are either going two or zero, all or nothing. All right, that's very face hunter like, right? <laughs> it's like I'm all in or I lost. Um, so it tends to be maybe the play style that makes this uh, a very 
I, it's funny though. I, I really think one of quick shot would make sense, but maybe the amount of damage that it deals is something you want to rely on um, consistently. Because when you do have an empty hand, quick shot is amazing. Like it's the most amazing thing. Quick shot into a, a, a wolf rider that's you know instant damage output that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get. So maybe having two of them in your deck makes your game plan. I, I I'm gonna say it more consistent with face hunters general. Um, approach to you know dealing bursty amounts of damage well in, in the article you reference quick thoughts on quick shot killer yeah. was actually arguing in uh in favor of quick shot not being included in phase hunter because mm -hmm. he thought you just couldn't cut anything in that deck for quick shot right and but, i would tend to agree with him i just feel like figure like glaive zuka is a good cut but yeah the issue is if uh a quick shot it actually improves the handlock matchup quite a bit because uh because it actually can get past taunts. You have the your hero power, you have the kill commands, you have the uh, you and you now have quick shots if you decide to run them. So yeah, it actually it's a bit more reach, favorable. right? Yeah, very favorable for Kibler if he is putting two of them in his deck. For this yeah, it kind of like reminds me of the uh, the sinister strikes from the old uh, you know backspace Malagos. rogue or Maligos yeah. rogue that you just you know Maligos sinister strike prep sinister strike goodbye handlock uh, whereas the typical miracle rogue had a bit of problems with dealing with the handlock because they couldn't go through the massive giants that were taunted up uh, whereas Maligos just had a much much easier time of it that's true so we're just uh slightly waiting for the players uh unfortunately we do have to mention that Frezar unfortunately he's at one and four in the league so far so if we have to be honest here, he's probably not going to make it to the playoffs. I don't actually believe there's a chance. He is uh, still fighting. Five matches played, and he's got you know a total of eight to play in his group. So he's got only three to go. So at best, he can equalize at four four if he wins every every yeah. uh, every follow up. But besides that, I don't really see it being ha being a realistic yeah. thing. There's one player, Stripe Crow, already at five two. There's three players, Show, Savitz, and Firebat, at four three in his group. So yeah, like you said, at best he can go 4-4, four, four, which is just not enough. So he's going to be hoping to get that playoff spot, but even that is, or sorry, he's going to be hoping to stay in the league for next season, but even that is just, it's probably not going to happen, if well, we have to be honest. Well, it's like, if he gets 4-4 four, four plus a high tiebreaker um, by beating some of the better players in the group, that's possible, but it's going to be a really uphill battle. And this is maybe the unfortunate you know, point about leagues, late stages of a league like this one, where some players just um, throw the towel, right? It's happened before. In Magic the Gathering and Swiss tournaments, after, let's say, four rounds of Swiss in a tournament and you realize you're somewhere in the bottom slash middle of the pack, you sometimes don't even try. A lot of players just quit the event and don't even bother going forward. Um, it, they might stick around for the experience, but they don't necessarily stick around for the hope of winning the event itself. Yeah, that being said, like, every match you win uh, improves your credibility in the scene and it just gets your name out a bit more. You don't want to be the guy that goes, like, 06 in tournaments, right? Or yeah, you don't want to be me. You don't, you don't want to be the guy who just shows up because he's been invited and then goes 06. At the very least, you want to give yourself a fighting chance. Um, but it's pretty, like, it's pretty nice, though, to... Uh, like that Frezar is going forward. At least I don't know if he like if he loses this match, I hope he doesn't just drop the future games. Okay, so it's actually we're gonna be going to the gameplay and it's actually gonna be a rogue from Frezar, so Yeah. Uh, I guess we were mistaken. It, it's he's not gonna be bringing his warlock in his first match, and that's actually gonna be uh either way. Oak it's versus be Hunter. Yeah. This is gonna be really problematic for the, the rogue player. I mean Face Hunter is known it's notorious for punishing rogue players. Yep, and that's quite annoying, having um, a Haunted Creeper on the field. Probably not what you want to deal with. Yeah, I mean, a pr oh wow, he does run quick shot. Kibler, you lied. Kibler lied. Kibler said quick shot was not something he'd include in this deck for uh, Hunter. Cause he No, actually, wait, he said he was dubious. There would be a way to cut something. Right. So, I mean, I guess he's not completely lying. Yeah, Kibler did that lie. Completely. <laughs> I saw everything. I'm going to quote from his article. Give me a sec. All right. <laughs> going to find a quote. I'm going to quote mine him to see what he said about Quick Shot. But yeah, it's interesting to see that he decided to run it. Maybe after watching some tournament plays and people um, running the deck to... Uh, the card that is to great success. Um... I think I think it's a good idea, perhaps to adapt your initial thoughts based on past experiences. 
Uh, so, uh, one backstab was used in the previous turn, and actually Fresno draws another one. Um, pretty much the best possible scenario for Fresno, just drawing your backstabs early, killing yeah. those knife jokers for free. It's very important, and he does get a pretty good hit there, though. Uh, but that Violet Teacher plus backstab play could be very impactful, especially if followed by something like, oh, wait, maybe not that, but... Could you actually just go for the Edwin? Backstab and then eviscerate face coin Edwin. Yeah, I mean, uh, face hunter, they don't actually have ways to deal with an Edwin Van Cleef besides add well, best hunter's mark, perhaps. Well, right? they do run two owls sometimes, either one or two owls, so that's actually quite a risky play now. Yeah, never that. mind. Yeah, <laughs> never mind. That That's not a play I don't think I'm willing to gamble on if I'm in Kimbler's shoes here. Uh, Kimbler's shoes, Kimbler. <laughs> Did you know his name was Kimbler when I mispronounce it? Um. <laughs> So, I mean, I don't think Edwin Van Cleef all in makes a lot of sense when you know Owl is everywhere. Oh, Huffer Companion. Did you did you expect anything else, Noxious? I think they hard-coded it, right? Everybody's agreeing on that, unless I'm mistaken. It actually, like, because it's such, like, a caster in-joke that it's always Huffer, like, I actually see Huffer, to be honest, more in match more than, all the, <laughs> than, than all the other animal companions. Like, I have to say, it's like... In my experience, it feels like it's like 40% of the time it's Huffer. Huffer, yeah. 40%, more still than 33. Like, there's a bit of leeway I'm willing to give Blizzard, but I think they hard-coded because they want Hunter to be everywhere. <laughs> that wow. that's, the, that's the deal. That's what they're doing. Blizzard has an evil, evil plan. Don't let them fool you. Yeah, so... Quite a lot of tokens can be spawned here, but this is actually one of those matchups where you don't want to spawn too many tokens. Uh, it's actually be, a drawback, yeah. Yeah, you'll be vulnerable to unleash the hounds, and you'll be vulnerable to like explosive trap anyways. So the explosive trap will deal with the tokens anyway. So like, usually you might actually just want to keep the um, drawing t the the tokens to a minimum. But uh, the the other thing is like, if you play the coin here, you get a Van Cleef out. So he's essentially he's with the coin, he gets one more token, and he gets two two stats on the Van Cleave. So yeah, I and think, I do like that. Yeah, I think this is a a really nice compromise. Well, that may be a nice compromise from Kibler's perspective as well. So, do you just vomit your hand on this board here, if you're uh, if you're Kibler? Like, do so, you go for like Arcan Golem, Worgen, Hero Power, then go for Unleash next turn with Quick Shot? So or... one. One cool trick that Firebat taught me is that you basically count the amount of damage on your hand and count the uh, amount of HP your opponent has and then figure based on that how many hero powers you have to fit in. So right now he has 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, like 13 damage in his hand. So yeah. he'll have to fit in 2 hero powers. Uh, to win with this, turns. yeah. Exactly. It shouldn't be a problem really. Yeah, that's the way you have to count again uh, with Hunter, right? How Like how... how um... How quick is the clock running for my opponent, in effect? Exactly. And not not only that, like, I counted on the Hounds as 4 damage, but it might even be more if uh, more spells are used. I mean, Frezar is in a world of hurt here, to be honest. Uh, sprint, sprint is no help at all. That's no as dead a draw as it gets. So, 3, 4, 5, yeah, that's, that's, that is lethal. That is lethal. So while this is ongoing, I'd like to quote mine, uh, Mr. Kibler, on uh, the specific words he said at the end of his article. I can certainly imagine different builds of Face Hunter that play fewer situational cards, getting value out of Quick Shot more often. But as it stands, I'm unconvinced that it belongs in Face Hunter in its current incarnation at all, except perhaps as an answer to the ever annoying Zombie Chow. So uh, yep, I saw a lot of Zombie Chows get removed by that Quick Shot here by Mr. Kibler. Actually, wait. <laughs> there was none. Yeah. So he did change his mind, though, on the on the card. That that's for sure. Uh, which I have to commend him for. I think it's a great adapt adaptation to make to Hunter. Uh, I think it's definitely fitting of the archetype, and it's nice that he recognized it very very soon. A lot of players have been playing around with it, as you mentioned. So it's no surprise. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much the standard these days to run quick shot in your base Hunter decks, and why not? It's three extra damage to face. Uh, like, I actually don't see it used very much for the draw effect. In fact, uh, the last, like, 
20 times I've seen quick shot in games when I've been casting this games. I believe only two of those times was the uh, draw ever relevant. So 10% yeah. of the time it's relevant. 90% of the time it's just a dark bomb. But as we know from uh, from Mech Mage, I guess like Frostbolt slash Dark Bomb is still pretty good as the final burn. Yeah, I really do like it. So we're going to see what the players play next. So Kibler, start with his Hunter. That's locked out. He's got Druid and Priest left, against which I think Frezar could secure a win with a Rogue, possibly. I mean, it's pretty good against Priest, and it's not necessarily horrible against Druid either, depending yeah, if, on the list that Druid is playing. Yeah, like you mentioned, if the Mage is indeed a Freeze Mage, then it pretty much doesn't matter how Frezar does against any other deck except Priest, and then Frezar's strategy can just be to 3 0 the Priest, which is very likely with a lineup of Mage, Rogue, and Druid, or Mage, Rogue, and Warlock. Yeah, I don't think it's that unlikely. So Kibler is going to be playing his Druid up against Frezar's expected Rogue, which I do like because it's not that bad against Druid, very strong against Priest. But if, you know, if Brian Kibler wins with his Druid, that doesn't guarantee uh, the win with the series since Frezar's lineup, as we said, is very, very much possibly tailored around the Priest that uh, Kibler does, I guess. How, how do you say it? Affectionate? Is that even a word? Uh, what? Like when you, when you like a specific deck. Oh. Uh, affectionate? Actually, he's affectionate, affectionate as an adjective. Yes, yeah. he's affectionate towards that deck. Right, okay, good. That, that, that's right. the word I'm looking for. So, I have to say that this matchup with uh, with the Dragon Druid versus Rogue probably is going to be very favorite for Rogue because Dragon Druid, I would imagine, doesn't put on as much pressure as a typical Druid. They don't oh, have it stuff like... It puts on quite a bit, though. Like, I've played that deck a lot. Um, yeah. So, but, I mean, it doesn't put as much, you're right. I, I would imagine it doesn't It doesn't have cards like um, Dr. Boom, it doesn't have cards like Harrison Jones or Lothab, and as we mentioned previously in this cast, like those are the key cards you want against um, Rogue. Yeah. You want the Swagner Rose and the Dr. Balance. Those are generally the most relevant cards against Rogue, because they end up sapping it, and then you just replay it, and then they still have to deal with it, and unless they're pressuring for lethal, that's generally not a problem for you. So again, a very slow start for Kibler, and yeah. he's gonna have just a lot of like weak cards slash situational cards in his hand. Keeper of the Grove is actually not great in this matchup at all. You normally use it for the two damage because the only things you can silence are like Bali Teachers and possibly that Edwin. All right. Well, there is a Doctor Boom in that deck. Oh. Well, I stand corrected. I think it still makes a bit of sense to play it anywhere, just in any Druid deck, that is. Not anywhere, necessarily. Although, you could make the case, but I think uh, in Druid, it's hard to not play the card. It's just so strong when you do get a board with it. Yeah, Valley Teacher. Um, so yeah, there's pretty much no way for for Kibler to deal with it. And again, leaving a Valley Teacher on the board as Druid, when you don't have a swipe in your hand, is always uh, fairly risky. I like this Blackwing tech, but unfortunately, there's really, like, I, I think Frezar's hand just lends itself so well to board control that it's going to be nigh impossible. And the worst part is that Paladin Shredder can curve in right behind the Deadly Poison and the Backstab to make Kibler's life even more of a nightmare. Yeah, just an ideal start for Frezar at this point. How how do you deal with this board at all? Like, you need to be able to swipe the Bad Teacher, you also need to swipe the Pilot Shredder, just like too many threats uh, on the board. And this is what Rogue excels at so much, being able to develop the board and clear the board, uh, clear your opponent's side of the board on the same turn. Yeah. I don't know how swipe would even solve the problem though. Wow, Frezar's tempo is crazy. Okay, wait. Could could Doctor Boom ever equalize this? At I, I, don't, I don't. I don't think even so. know that it would, right? Yeah. I think like when you play the Doctor Boom, which will probably be turn six. The problem is that the Rogue will just uh, like he, he'll have so much on the board that it just like it's too much pressure. That being said, like if the most likely play here for Frezar is that he's gonna sap this root of the claw. And if you sap the Druid of the Cloud, that means Dr. Boom gets to stay on the field. Yeah, I mean, depending on what you find off the sprint, I mean, there could be a prep and another sap. 
um, off the top as well. Although, from what we see right now, is he going to go for the Blade Flurry Eviscerate and keep the Sab for a bigger threat? Okay, you know what? I don't even dislike that because he saw no swipe, so he's almost certain that there is not any coming. Right? Yeah, that I mean, swipe that sense. is. Yeah. yeah wow. it's, uh, this play is actually a lot better against Dr. Boom. So if Prezar is, Prezar is keeping track of the coin, which I'm sure he is, and he's uh, anticipating a Dr. Boom on the board, then it's actually really good here. Yep. One of the tricks that I used to actually remember. Um, if the coin's been used, I just close like on the Nax board. I just close the gate at the top right, uh, where the you know the ooze comes out, and I just close it when the coin's been used, or I you know fire the rocket on the Gnome Regan board, and he finds the prep. Are you kidding me? This is incredible. He needed exactly those three cards, <laughs> and that's true too. To make sure every follow up he had was near perfect, he needed exactly those. So you actually you probably want to do this very carefully. Um, I would say you prep, and then you attack with the uh, the pilot shredder and the pilot teacher. Then you attack with one of your one ones, uh, because you want your uh, you you want your you want the you want to spawn enough one ones, but you also want it to die one by one. So yeah, I think that was actually a misplay here. Yeah, you not attacking. Actually, you actually want no, you actually want to prep first, because you summon a one one, and you can actually. Uh, have a bigger chance for one of the one ones that can attack to die from to the die one. instead of having one of the ones that can deal one damage. Slight misplay there, but not the biggest deal, I think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, he essentially has a very small chance to miss one damage. Is the only thing. Yeah. And again, not a huge oh, problem, but it's okay. Again, I I, I would have liked to see the the sap before. Uh, again, before attacking, before, attacking, before everything, exactly. yeah. Well, I think ultimately in this position, it doesn't matter too much because based on what we're looking at, I think Kibler has absolutely 0, 0.0 chance of winning this. Hey, look, another dragon. Here the be dragons, but no way to enable them. So I guess you Alex draws yourself and then you're, you hope your opponent has absolutely nothing at all. Well, the other play is to concede, of course, and Kibler goes for that <laughs> Escape player. concede, power play. Yeah, that was a, a sick play here by uh, by Kibler. Although I can't blame him with this. Like he's playing Dragon Druid, and as you said, it's really tough in a conquest format to bring a possible single weak link. Right? You have one weak link in your lineup, and you eventually are forced to win with it at the very least once. The thing with Dragon Druid is that you know how Mech Druid snowballs uh, with Mech Warper and uh, you know Powdered Shredders. Dragon Druid can do the same, but it needs to get such a perfect hand to do so, um, that it's even more punished by bad draws than Mech Druid is, which it, it, like, Mech Druid is punished by bad draws, but Dragon Druid is even worse. Yeah, um, like the, I guess just by looking at, uh, Kibler's deck right now, it seems like Kibler really wants to curve out with, the uh, turn 3 Blackwing Technician, turn 4 Twilight Drake, and then turn 5 Azure Drake. Yeah. Um, the issue with that is I feel like Innervate probably doesn't really help you much with that strategy it's kind of like anti-synergy between innervate and twilight, and twilight drake, drake, yeah yeah and you it feels like it's even it's a deck that's even more dependent on curving out and uh than the typical druid like a typical druid if they don't curve out i guess it's still okay because you always have the possibility of innervating into like ancient of lore later ancient but of this lore, type yeah. of druid like it's very possible for your hand to get just really cloggy yeah, and the thing is, like, innervating out a Blackwing tech when you have dragons in hand is amazing. But I think that's going to be reinforced once we see Hungry Dragon come out and the Volcanic Drake, perhaps. Those cards, I think, will make the archetype even more reliable. All right, so for the next game, Brian Kibler is going to be playing his Priest, and Frezar is going to be picking up a Warlock. So if it is, in fact, uh, Handlock, I guess Double Light Bomb makes the entire matchup easier. But by how much? Exactly. Even though the light bomb version of Priest is better against Handlock than typical control classic control variants, I still feel like it's an unfavorable matchup. The light bombs can only go so far, and as we saw from the matchup between uh, Tice and Kibler, um, like it's also possible for the Warlock player just to bait out the light bombs before they get too much value. Well, our every expectation we had is wrong, and you know the worst part? There's a double flame imp. Coming up, and now it's all about Kibler getting that North Shire out as soon as possible. Otherwise, things will get very ugly. 
they're gonna get very ugly anyway, right? Double Flame Imp versus Double North Shire Cleric. Uh, who wins the war? A, I'll let you have a guess who wins that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the clerics are well equipped to handle this, and Kibler's reaction is exactly what I expected. He says greetings, saying hello to the imps, which, you know what, this, uh, the Shadow Boxer is pretty much on point. Yeah, it's I think this is nice. one of the best draws in Kibler's deck for this position, right? Yeah, possibly the best draw. Um, the problem is it's nice, but it basically, uh, Fezzar's one drop will be built to trade into Kibler's two drops, so he's going to be getting a, a tempo lead from this play, which is exactly what Du wants to do, getting tempo plays. Um, the problem is this a variant of Priest is actually really bad at coming back into the game, so if Frezzer ever gets a really good board, Kibler will be pretty hard-pressed to stop it. Yeah, the, um, the best part though is that, you know, the, the light bombs against Zoo are typically somewhat okay. Um, the Holy Nova is also pretty good. The Death Lords, if gotten early, are also amazing. But he needs to find one just about right now. Otherwise, the utility of it will be largely, I guess, minimum, uh, like diminished. Yeah. So it's actually, we saw like one reason why uh, Giblin Stalker was better than, uh, is better than Shadow Boxer in some cases, which is if the Giblin Stalker were played instead of Gib, uh, instead of uh, the Shadow Boxer, then that Giblin Stalker would have survived to receive a Velen's Chosen buff, and this game could have turned out completely differently. Yep. It could have survived. Could have survived. So my is question a, is... Wait, is, is that, that a song? Uh, you haven't you heard the Red Shirt guy? The Red Shirt song, no. the guy at BlizzCon who humiliated the WoW devs? Well, not really humiliated, but, you know, asked them a really, really important life-changing question. And it's been auto-tuned. All right, whatever. Just you guys have time. Get back just, to me on that. Uh, yeah, just just like like red shirt guide on red shirt guy on Google. You'll find that. All right, so back to the game. So Kibler has a pallet shredder, which happens to be pretty much on curve. He's got uh, sludge belchers in that deck, right? Um, Please tell me one, he does. There's one sludge belcher and one antique heal bot in this deck. Okay, he's gonna need everything he can get. Actually, this villain's chosen. Oh. Oh, wow. Whoa, that is good. Oh, that's is that really not good? good, actually. I think that is really good. <laughs> is <it> Tightwell <laughs> going to save the day? Is this, is this adventure mode? <laughs> yeah, Light Ball is uh, certainly very good <laughs> in a lot of adventure modes. Yeah. Okay, well, you know what? I, like, it's good, right? But let, let's be realistic. There is still a lot of pressure, like, in Frezar's hand. Just that Doomguard alone could make up. Oh, man, but there's a Sylvanas and everything else. Could this Lightwell be the game winner? But there's a self-healing 2-7 on the board. Yeah, it won't self-heal if it's dead, though. That's the issue I have with it. That's true. You bring <laughs> up a very good point. <laughs> All right, so let's see if uh, Frezar just I, I think Frezar has to trade into it, right? You can't let it live. There's no way. There's yeah. absolutely zero way you can let the Lightwell live. All right, good. Well, good. That's a that's a way to put it, but Well, Sylvanas is not amazing here, but it might deter Frezar from playing the Doom Guard at the very least. Oh. Maybe not. Well, that fits the curve, I guess. Yeah, pretty well. So actually, both players are... They, I, I would say that neither player is too comfortable with his position. Uh, uh because, okay. Because, like, I, I know what you're thinking, but, like, because Frezar, even though he has such a strong board, he's kind of afraid oh, of, like... Oh, my... Exactly that, or a light bomb. Light Bomb would just be insane. Would be on this so board. insane, yeah. Light Bomb would be the draw. Like, Holy Nova here is good, but they're one. he's one mana off of really making it work to, you know, perfection with the Valence Chosen. Mind you, it's not bad, but it could be better. And there's Lethal Looming, I believe, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, yeah actually, this is uh, very close to Lethal at this point. He's I think not... a top deck, a top deck is all he needs at this point. Like a power of whelming, one of the two uh, that he probably runs, perhaps one of the two abusives as well, would be enough for Frezar. 
the the very quote unquote obvious play is to break up the uh, um, the Hunter Creeper and then uh, Holy Nova to to kill off the Hunter Creeper tokens. But it but makes the, even more damage, right? Yeah. No, the problem with that play, no, you kill the tokens. But the problem with that play is. You leave a 1-1 one, one taunted boardwalker on the field, and if you leave that up, basically what that says is, uh, is that Sylvanas won't be able to uh, attack into anything like the Sea yeah. Giant on the next turn. But I think the biggest issue with that is that Nerubinet gets bopped with the Nova, and you're putting even more damage on the board than there was. Yeah, that's You remove two 1-1s, one and you put in a 4-4. Four, four. You're creating a net damage gain for the opponent. Well, there is a total of... How did we... Oh, well, that's oh, going to well, be game. We don't even have to count right now. Yeah, it's... what is mathematics? You can, like... In Amaz's word, you can eyeball the board and figure out when there's lethal. Yeah, sometimes, like, when I know it's lethal, I'm just like, okay, I'm not going to count it. Let's just go for face. Yeah. See what lands and, uh... Just Usually it. works, right? Like, you get a, a general feeling. It's like it's like children. Um, or even societies that haven't developed an, a legit numerical, no like, system. They actually have a, an understanding of what means, of what more and less mean without having to count. So that's kind of how it feels when you just smash face. Um, with minions, like you're, when you're playing face hunter, right? Like you just drag stuff to the face. You have a good feeling. You're in the vicinity of you know 17 damage per turn. That that's pretty much how it feels. That's uh, and there's no exaggeration there, right, Noxious? No, not not at all. None. I I wouldn't I wouldn't dare I wouldn't dare to exaggerate. Yeah, all right. So well, uh, that's gonna be 2-0 for Frezar, I believe. Brian Kibler is on a massive loss. Oh, actually, wait, it's 2-1. For Frezar. Yeah, two one. My for apologies. Frezar. And it's gonna be Frezar next with the mage deck. He's forced to play that deck, and Kibler will. He has a choice between his uh, dragon druid deck or his priest deck, and he's gonna be choosing his priest deck for the possibly the match point, the final set of this series. Yeah, that would be if Frezar wins this game, he takes the entire series, and then Kibler ends up with two matches lost back to back on this uh, on this day, and that would be a little unfortunate for him, I suspect, as a player, just as far as the psychological pressure that this puts. And he also ends up going two four, which although that equalizes with Frezar, as we mentioned, Frezar's position is not exactly enviable. Yeah. Also, if uh, if Frezar wins this game right now, he'll just uh, actually pull up in front of Kibler in the standings, right. and Kibler will actually be last place in this league. All right, well, we're going to have to see how this mage performs against the priest or how the priest performs against the mage. If this is mech mage, uh, I, I suspect the priest has a pretty good chance, right? I think it's uh, it's probably closer to 50-50. Um, and it really depends on your draws. This cleric plus velen combo is going to be really key. And we're going to see, like, pretty much it, it, it'll come down to whether Frezar can deal with, uh, can deal with this initial threat of a 3-7 on the board that can heal and draw cards every single turn. Yeah, I think the Northshire Cleric, like, the biggest problem is, like, it needs to live. That is the biggest issue that Kibler is going to run into, is that 1-3 needs to stay alive. And against the Mage Ping, plus all the 2 attack, 2 drops, that is very, very difficult to pull off. Alright, well, Northshire Cleric is smashed on the board. Turn 1, I think Frezar's response is going to be equally smashy. Yeah, good way to describe it, I guess. Uh, having two mad scientists in your hand is actually... It It really depends on the secrets you're running in your deck. If you're running two mirror entities and a counterspell, it's uh, pretty good. But if you're running both mirror entities, usually the second mad scientist is kind of a dead, dead card for about two or three turns until both the first mad scientist dies and the mirror entity from the first mad, mad scientist gets procced. Yeah. I think... Uh... Oh, well, this is not. This is actually a really good card for Kibler to find right now. To like the safety of knowing he's got a light bomb is going to allow him on turn six to do a lot better. I think it's a really strong yeah. card. And actually, Frezar will not be killing the Northshire cleric with the ping attack. I have to say, I'm unconvinced if he doesn't. The risks are too high with the possibility of Valens chosen in my mind. Yeah, definitely true. All right, he does kill it. All right, so he dodged that bullet at the very least. Yeah. Uh, light light bomb against mech mage is kind of a mixed bag for priest because a lot of the the mechs or the the car the minions in the in the mage's deck are two threes or three fours like the spider mm -hmm. tank, the uh, the snow chugger, the mech warper, and even the neurotron. The basically it doesn't even do any damage to the neurotron. It just procs off the divine shield, right? 
All right. Yeah, I think it's you. You are the value of the the, the dark bomb, the light bomb. Sorry, is much lower perhaps than I intended to be. It's just that against aggro, you want every possible board wipe or help to a board wipe. And for that reason, maybe control priest is best tailored to deal with it in a way because they've got the Alcanized Circle and as well the Pyromancer plays, which this deck sorely lacks at times. You mentioned Thais doesn't like the deck very much, and I think I can somewhat relate now that I see it in action a bit more. Yeah, it's oftentimes it feels inconsistent, and if you don't get like um, a really good opening start, you kind of feel really bad, and it's really difficult to come back. Wow, did that just happen? Three, two hits to the face. So the 4-4 four, four Shadow Boxer is going to live for Kibler. That's as good as he could have asked. He can actually kill everything and then heal it up. Whoa. Yeah. Kibler will be able to assert dominance and assert board control here. Yeah, it's about sending a message. Yeah, oftentimes in these situations, um, it comes down to whether your opponent actually has a Frostbolt or a Fireball to deal with these minions. Or yeah, like, those Death Lords that get, you know, Valence what, Chosen, what, how much exactly. effort do you have to put into it? That's the yeah, biggest what, factor. When I say these minions, I actually just mean this one minion that's super annoying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The one guy who got 17,000 health off of Valence Chosen and just gets repeatedly healed. You know, you said Light Bomb wasn't good, necessarily optimal against Reason Mage, but when you have two of them, it's like at back, back to back. Usually that's enough, right? Yeah, it can oftentimes just stack with each other. And actually, also, Light Bomb is just generally a very good card against uh, Dr. Boom as well. So we'll, we'll almost certainly be seeing at least one dark uh, Light Bomb being played in this match. Yeah. Also, I would like to confirm there was no grill behind me. And there is no noise in the background. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're able to confirm that, Monk. All right, so there's a second Mirror TT that comes out. Does that put... Uh, never mind... I was going to say, does that put Kibler in a weird spot, but the Zombie Chow is going to save the day, perhaps. Yeah, Zombie Chow... Actually, he's, he's got to be considering the Light Bomb first, right? He's he's probably asking himself... I'm not sure if this is a turn where you Light Bomb. Though. Yeah, I, I don't think, think uh, so. I disagree, you're right. You can, might be able to develop the board. The funny thing about this deck is... Um, it's very minion focused, but the light bombs are really anti minion focused. If you if you get my drift. No, like, I, what... I catch your drift, monk. I caught yeah. it full on. Uh, I just kind of understand what you mean. It it feels like the light bombs are counterproductive. The thing is that you you still need those board wipes in priest. If you don't find one, you'll never be able to compete with the tempo that the opponents can get. It's like you need a backup plan, even when you play big minions. Oh man. Well, well, here's at least the backup plan for uh, for Frezar. Yeah, the problem is Light Bomb is going to deal with that pretty nicely. I mean, that's as good a Light Bomb as you're going to get. You know what I said? There was no one for one with uh, to, to deal with Dr. Boom, but I think Light Bomb is the closest you're going to get. You're still taking 8 damage on average from the Boom Bots, but uh, <laughs> I, think, I think it is like the, the best option. Oh, noxious. So tongue and cheek. No, never. I have no tongue. And I have no cheeks. Uh, how are you co casting this game then without a tongue? Pretty impressive, I would say. Microsoft Sam mode enabled. That's true. Yeah. When yeah, GVG yeah. came out, I got a, a snowplow installed because I identify as a snow chugger, and as a result, I also got mechanical voice. Uh, so you sexually identify as a snow chugger. You just want to chug and chug and chug all day, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I do across the plains of Azeroth. <laughs> All right, so we should be seeing a light bomb fall down. If not now, then uh, just right after the now. I don't see any reason why that wouldn't be the case. Although he might attack the zombie chow first, right? Well, it doesn't matter when. Actually, it might matter. I'm thinking... Since the boom boss could wipe this board. Is there a possible um, Vulgin play that I'm... I think, yeah, uh, I think actually Vulgin wouldn't actually be too bad here. Actually, yeah, maybe Vulgin is much better. You're right, you just killed a zombie chow, you Vulgin that 7-7 seven, seven trade. What do you do about the 5-4 over there? Uh, you can, okay, so you can, uh, you can because if you attack with the Dark Cultist into that, you can, you can trade off your Pilot Shredder into the 
Goblin Blast Mage, and then use your Zombie Chow to kill off the Dr. Boom. Okay, I see. Well, that's not gonna be what he opts to do, apparently. He's just gonna let the Dark Bomb go. Wait! I was gonna say, does, doesn't the Dark Cultist trigger first? But apparently it would have triggered afterwards. From what I saw. Because the I, did it take more than one damage? I think it took one from the Boom Bomb. Yeah, it took exactly one damage. That's exactly now, the damage he needed to take. I guess uh, we'll never know. So, so this, is, this is actually pretty huge. As long as this uh, this Clockwork Gnome doesn't get like Cabal or Shadow Bandist, then uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of Fireballs coming on the next turn. Well, there is a Valens Chosen. I think this is going to be... A pretty good Valens Chosen Vulgen play. I mean, you could do either way. Like, you, you have options. I feel like there's like 20 lines of play that could be taken. But Kibler's position is much better than Frezar's, I'd venture to say. Yeah, he just has all the cards to back him up. And it'll get to a point where... Did he, wait, did he Thought Steal Lothan? Did he just Thought Steal Lothan? Did that just happen? And a fireball. You can't forget well, about the fireball. And he's gonna be able to curve it out right after Light Bomb to kill the Archmage if necessary. Did you did you like my uh dun, 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 dun. Yeah, did you like my, my my impression of the Archmage coming onto the screen? I, I just Does, doesn't he say do you require my assistance? Yeah, okay, so you're the you're the sound effect guy for Hearthstone. Oh man, another spare part. <laughs> oh, the worst! Time rewinder, what are you gonna time rewind? Archmage? I don't think so. It's... <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't... This is so bad for Frezar. What a bad time rewinder. I think the RNG in this game is definitely going to Kibler. Yeah. If RNG just had to pick a side here, I think we could safely say he took Kibler's. Yeah, don't worry. It's like Karma though. It'll, it'll bounce, uh, balance out eventually. Well, Frezar is uh, having a tough time making his mind up. He doesn't know which seat to take. Alright, so Time Rewinder is going to be used on the Snow Chugger. So I guess Frezar is going to be hoping for other fireballs off the off the deck. Uh, the Archimate, the Vol'jin is going to be so good here. Yeah, I think he's just hoping for uh, that, that Kibler doesn't Wait, have that's right. Going. Fireball deal 7. You know what? This is Ignite mode. I forgot Fireball yeah. was deal 7. I completely zapped out on that. I'm, I'm glad you were the one to make that joke because uh, I would have been forced to make it if uh, you didn't. The Ignite? Yeah, I would, I would yeah. have like the bad guy. Okay, of course. Yeah, I can take the hit. It's fine. I'm a Shield Maiden. Alright, so let's see if he decides to bulge in or what. I, I like the fireball play backed by uh, a possible Lothab or even Thought Steel Death Lord, quite frankly. There's so many lines of play you can take here, and I think all of them are definitely acceptable. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking at the uh, fireball though, because it just seems so perfect. Well, what do you does... think about Thought Steel first? If it's Frostbolt, you then bulge in Frostbolt? It's possible as well. And if it's not Frostbolt, then you just go Death Lord? Well, okay. Okay, so is he bulging plus fireballing? No, nah, just trading it, trading the minion away. Okay, so just uh, the strongest play, not for necessarily the most value, though. Yeah. Well, that would have been 15 damage for Frezar this turn, which means a follow up fireball would have done it. So I think it's a good thing that Kibler played that low that there was a chance that the follow ups would have been disastrous. So this actually might be one of the situations where, like, Frezar could actually consider just frostbolting the face and pinging, and hopes that he draws running fireballs over the next uh, two turns. Yeah, I don't because, even dislike that line of thinking. Yeah, with this line of play, he makes himself vulner more vulnerable to uh, to Cabal Shadow Priest, for example, and more likely than not, the uh, the priest player will be able to deal with this board completely without any trouble, and able to heal up every single turn. Stealing. Oh, second fireball. So both well, the that's, mage and that's pretty sweet, <laughs> I guess. So actually, the, uh, the the 
priest player in this matchup has more fireballs from his deck than the mage player because all these these are fake fireballs in yeah they're from hand, archmage basically. they don't count i think i can agree with you on that not real fireballs they're not real boys unreal boys so if Frezar finds a fireball here oh oh goodness he can just go wait he's, he's dead though isn't he there's 24 on board, so he would die to double fireball. <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, uh, what, what is he hoping for at all? I think he just go full face here. You freeze one of the minions. He's still gonna die though. No way. This is not actually happening. Well, that's actually exactly lethal. Frezar is like, hey. Oh my god. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm in a good position here, right? Th but this no. Lothab. This Lothab actually was the play that Kibler needed to make. Not to die to this back to back, you know, Frostbolt Fireball draw from Frezar, and this well played is gonna bite. <laughs> Frezar is gonna feel absolutely atrocious for getting to say that well played. Um, those fireballs, man, they're good. Yeah, I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, typically, pre like a lot of people say, uh, Priest doesn't have a lot of. Uh, burst burst yeah. damage, but I think we can p completely throw that all out the window from looking at the previous game. Yeah, I mean, between Zombie Chow, Zombie Chow, Baron Riven Dare, Akinai Circle, double Mind Blast, double Shadow Bomber, and the double Fireball, I think Priest is opening itself, but to be one of the top aggro, you know, deck contenders in the metagame very soon. Yeah, and uh, after that ma after that game, it's actually going to be tied 2-2. Two to two, So we're going to be going into the, the final game of this series pretty quickly. It's going to be Kibler's Dragon Druid against uh, Frezar's just standard Mech Mage. And you have to think that this favors Mech Mage so much. Yeah. Um, it's not even going to be Zombie Chow's probably in Kibler's deck. And he has all big creatures like the... Uh, like black wing technician even as a three drop it's gonna be a three five most of the time yeah the only thing i um i do like about the druid deck uh is the fact that if it does get the board somehow through innervate it's gonna be really hard for the mage just to take it over if it gets a three five black wing tech because that is a card that you know you innervate it out early if it becomes a three five you hear a power down on oyotrons you can kill the two three mech warpers and you have more on the back end as time progresses so it's just about getting that first, you know, first or second turn tempo for the Druid player. But that's excessively difficult, as we know. Against Mech Mage, it's already bad. But, uh, you know, an inconsistent Dragon deck makes it even even tougher. Uh, not only that, uh, even innervating out, like, a Druid of the Flame could be also possible. And it's a card that is very good against aggro decks. And it's why it's in Kibler's deck, I guess. Even though he d already has a 3-drop in the form of Blackwing Technician. Yeah. So we'll have to see what he does. Maybe that Blackwing will be more useful than the Shade. I mean, it's baseline at 2-4, so he can use it right away. Maybe that's more relevant to 3-3 that gets pinged on the back end, but uh, we'll have to see. So we're going to be going into the game shortly. That's the last game of the match. After that, though, we have Colento versus Amaz. So, you know, when this is done, don't go anywhere. Either way, it's not going to be over. Also, I'd like to remind you that tomorrow, starting tomorrow, uh, going through the weekend, we'll have the KFC um, not the food type, the King Win for Charity event, which is going to be another tournament for, you know, organized by King Win to, in the support of Child's Play Foundation. We've had a few of them last year. This is the Easter edition of the one for 2015. So we're going to have a fresh roster of 16 players, some lesser known names like Ekta and Olish, I guess, that some people might have not heard of. But otherwise, you'll see Forsen, Ecop, and, you know, all the, the players that you're used to seeing. So in a nutshell, King Gwen's not done with, you know, the with this KPL on Thursday. We're going to be going on all through the weekend. So, yeah, I guess yes. uh, with the new cards tomorrow, we should have quite a bit of fun. Yeah, so much Hearthstone content just provided to us by King Gwen. And if you uh, like King Gwen and you want to support them, you can always visit uh, King Gwen. You can type in the code KPL and you'll actually save 8% on all your games. 8%? Oi, that's a lot. Yeah, you know like, what? They should they should make sales in Hearthstone where the, you log in. The guy's like, "Hey, there's a twenty percent sale on card packs. Head there now." I, I wonder if they'd actually bother with that, or if they just announce it as you log on and never like while you're in the middle of a game, they just pop up nonstop. Every time you play a card, card packs on sale. I wonder slightly if that's, annoying. Uh, <laughs> just slightly, slightly annoying. I would have to say. <laughs> 
Yeah, wouldn't be surprised though. Oh, Innervate is found with that Druid of the Flame. Excellent. That's, wow. Uh, Harvesting service why... engaged. Yeah, pretty much why Druid of the Flame is in this deck. And uh, yeah, it's going to be really nice for Kibler because he's going to be able to contest pretty much most of the stuff that Frezar puts on the field. Uh, not the Snow Chugger, but. Uh, well, he like, will kill with... it with the Hero Power if you want. Exactly, wants. exactly. It's not ideal though, because if the Snow Chugger freezes this Druid of the Flame, then the Mad Scientist will somewhat get free reign, but this Druid of the Flame will still uh, be able to kill off a lot of minions. So Kibler is considering not killing the Snow Chugger, or is he thinking about his follow-ups? Because his follow-ups admittedly are very weak, right? Like He's got no 3-drop other than the Druid of the Flame he's already played, so he's going to have to find a Blackwing tech, um, a Wrath perhaps. You've got my attention. Just going full face. Actually, that's not even a bad idea because Frezar does have to make the trade eventually. You know what? That's a great play. But what about Frostbolt? Yeah, Frostbolt geez. would actually really punish you somewhat, I guess. Yeah, because then you throw back the initiative on turn 3 by hero powering down the Snow Chugger. And then... Mage gets initiative on turn four. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I like this a whole ton. Well, it won't get punished this time. Yeah, and pretty much anything that Frezar will play on the field again, it will be contested by the the two five. That's really interesting that the the two five is a bird, and the five two is a lion. A, a lion, yeah. yeah the lion usually... looks so much cooler, right? Well, usually, like, the birds, like, in, in typical video games, birds don't have a lot of HP. And the lions are the ones that do have more HP, right? Like, if you think, like, if you just think of, in the in terms of the real world, how much more HP would a lion have than a bird, right? Or am I, am I thinking way too deep into this? I don't know, I look at King of Beasts and I suspect you may be right. Yeah, Savannah High Main, right? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think, I think that was a huge mistake. I think we should start a petition, Monk. Huge mistake from Blizzard's end. Yeah, definitely. Wow. <laughs> what are we going to do? I cannot look at this game the same way now. You know, that Shoot of the Flame is getting... Um, I mean, it's not getting much done with the absent... With the Snow Chugger just freezing the Druid every single time. Yeah, and oh, now Twilight Ray's pretty good, though. Twilight Ray, so... Twilight Yeti. Yeah, Twilight Yeti. Not quite yeah. the handlock value, but... I, I feel like uh, Goblin Blast Mage, it's uh, very similar to Dr. Boom in the way that it's basically, if you have Goblin Blast Mage on turn wow. 4 and it's highlighted Did... green, you just play it. Did you see this? It hits for 3 to the face again. Yeah, just really bad RNG <laughs> in terms of uh, <laughs> Goblin Blast Mage throughout the entire day. I think all Goblin Blast Mages have been like Pretty fail. Yeah, they have been. Maybe Blizzard is hard coding the good RNG for other classes. How's this chair playing? Can you explain to me how this chair is playing? Oh, it's true. Huh. Can anybody tell me? Uh, okay, that's interesting. It's pretty. Oh. Uh, I think I think uh, Kibler was like just really dug down in the chair. Oh, okay, I get it. All right, so Kibler has a 10 minute delay on camera. All right, great. I was confused, to say the least. That fireball was such a sick top deck here for Frezlar, allowing him not to have to trade his entire minion line away. He had, you know, yeah. Spider Tank and the Snow Chugger. Those would have been really big losses. Yeah, essentially, he gains one mana of tempo with that play, trading a four mana card for a five mana card. Yeah, and, and towards the, the end game here, it's a really big deal. Yeah, he just uh, gets more damage onto his opponent's face, but just, uh, get, like, it's the 6 damage he's lost with the fireball, is just gained back with the 6, man six damage he's done with the minions. Alright, well, I mean, looking at this, I'm gonna have to say Kibler's Druid was his weak link this game, right? <laughs> it's a little unfortunate. Um, yeah, it's almost certain that the Mech Mage will win at this point, and, uh, like you said, it's, it's unfortunate that 
Kibler, he's, he's brought a really interesting deck. Unfortunately, it's not like the uh, certainly not the best deck in the meta right now, and he's going to get punished for it. Yeah, bringing an experimental deck, or perhaps it's been working somewhat on ladder, but you've got to be getting the element of surprise, generally speaking, to win with decks like these when people don't know about them. But in this case, I think after you know a few matches against it, Fresnar fully knows what to expect, and we'd even yeah. seen it in the series prior. So, yeah, the thing is, like, it's also um, even though this is kind of a new and unexpected deck, it's not a deck that punishes you for not playing around cards yeah. that you don't know are in the deck, right? Yeah, exactly. It, like, it is novel, but not in a way that's going to surprise you to the point where you just get blown out by it. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's not, it doesn't have like cards like Fel Reaver. If you don't know Fel Reaver is in a particular deck, for example, oh you my might goodness. just play a BGH on turn 3 or 4, and you don't have anything to answer Fel Reaver. Well, Judah the Claw Wrath does somewhat stem the bleeding for one turn at the very least. I mean, if he finds Alex Straza and, and Frezar whiffs, you know, back to back. Wow, yeah, could I'm... that actually be a thing? It could. If Frezar uh... doesn't find Frostbolt, no Fireball, and a few draws. Oh, that'd be incredible, though, but it's so unlikely to happen. Yeah, what, one thing Kibler does have going for him is that there's both a Mad Scientist and a Mirror Entity out. So uh, those are pretty much going to be like three damage wasted, but whoa, Archmage Antonitis comes on the field. Or it comes into Kibler's hand rather, or Frezar's hand, and it, it, that just brings a sense of inevitability into this game. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this board now, and now the Mirror Entity is going to be so problematic for Kibler to handle. I mean, he, can't, he just can't do anything about it. The swipe with the Zerd Drake, it's actually surprisingly effective. Can he play Keeper of the Grove and... Uh, he's going to be one mana off. He can play Keeper for two and the Drake for four, but he can't do everything. Could he Could he have the Savage War here? Is that a possibility? I think he has the Keeper and Swipe here. And, and Swipe here, him, yeah. That gets him out of Frostbolt range, the second Frostbolt. So you Keeper of the Grove, Hero Power. I mean, you're giving your opponent a Keeper of the Grove, right? So you Keeper of the Grove, the 2-3, then you Swipe the 4-4 four, four Drake, then you kill your Keeper with the Drew of the Claw. Yeah, it's a, cl a very clean board. I like it. Yeah, I think that's actually going to be his only line of play. And honestly, if he top decks Alex Straza next turn, this could be a turnaround. We, I was calling the loss, but I, I lied, Monk. I just oh, keep doing that. You lied again, second time yeah. today. Yeah, I just, I just don't stop. So we're gonna. This is gonna be the draw of the game. Will, will Fraser be able to talk to, top deck some damage? No, that's that not it at all. It's the opposite of damage, unfortunately. Yeah, and the question is, Kibler, will he find Alex Straza? Because that, again, is going to be the mandatory card for him to find. And that might not even be enough with the advent of the Mirror Entity coming up. Um, I think he's going to have to get another swipe of that Drake. Yeah, another swipe of the Drake would be great, though. Yeah, you can't always get what you want, though, Noxious. Uh... Yeah. Unless, Unless you get what you need, right? <laughs> Very true. Ah, he's gonna ping the Druidal Claw. Another Drake. Double Azure Drake. Okay. Oh man, that swipe is so important. Oh, oh wait. Oh, Defender of Argus. Whoa! That is, again, another saving throw here for Kibler. It is, but uh, without any heals right now. Alex uh, Straza, I'm counting yeah. on it. It's like the only out he's got, right? Well, Ancient of Lore, actually, does this deck even have Ancient of Lore? It's entirely likely, like, has we, if we haven't seen an Ancient of Lore, uh, run that card in his deck. What I remember is a deck with one Ancient of Lore, it drew a deck with only one Ancient. Yeah, how crazy is that, right? Yeah, that was something that, that like, I, I don't remember having seen much before uh, Kibler did it. Wow, if Kibler finds that Alex, or a Force of Nature for that matter, Oh, wait, he could blow out his opponent. Yeah, Force of Nature would just end it. Although I can't with, believe this. With this, this is deck, though, real. I had to think that it only runs one Force of Nature, so... Yeah, it's probably only one of... So, so two out of however, remain, however many remaining cards are in Kibler's deck, that's probably 10 cards. Or, yeah. sorry, 20 cards in the deck, so it's a 1 in 10 of just uh, possibly winning. Although, I think right now, Force of Nature isn't enough. Blackwing that is not what he wants to see, but it's at least a body. The question is, do you play the Drake instead? 
to improve your board, do you really want to get a 3-5? What could the Drake draw you that you play that's going to really improve your your chances of killing that? I guess a Wrath would be good off the Drake, but you can still play it afterwards. Yeah, that's true. Um, oh, oh, man. So, yeah, nothing really changed there. He got uh, some extra value off the first Black Wing Technician. You know what? Fireball is the only lethal that I'm looking from Frezar, and he could die next turn to Savage Roar, so he needs to find it, and he doesn't. What is that going to be from the Shredder? It's a Frostwolf Grunt. Could be pretty helpful, to be honest. It's going to stop a bit of aggression, but I think he's dead. I think he's dead, Monk. He's dead. Is he dead? I'm, I'm pretty sure he's dead. Yes, he is. Okay, with, with that what? wrath, he's definitely dead. <gasps> what? <laughs> no way. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely enough. He can even oh draw for two. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he draws for two, just in case, you know, just to make sure that... He actually wins. Why was I talking about this Druid deck as though it had lost? He just got the game away from Frezar. Yeah, it's actually fairly typical for Druid decks to win against Mech Mage in this way. Like, it's, yeah, it always but... seems like Druid is losing, but sometimes, like, Mech Mage, they just don't draw into their last burn spell. I don't even know what to say. All I know is that Kibler is going to be winning a game, putting himself at 3-3, to -3, which means, you know, he just lost a game to Thais, and he's going to be equalizing with Thais in, the, in the, the group that they're in, which means they're both 3-3 now, equalized. Uh, and Frezar has the official... Worst um, score of the entire league, I think, at 1-5 at the moment in his entire series. Yeah, it's quite wow. unfortunate. It, it, at a 1-5 score, it almost certainly means that he won't be able to qualify for uh, the next round. He'll have to go through the open brackets just like everyone else, unfortunately for him. Yeah, if he wants to come back for Season 2, there is a possibility that it's not going to be very... Uh, I think it's very unlikely, as you said, that he's going to be able to climb through and move on to the re-invite for Season 2, but it's possible. Um, if all the other players who have to play lose a lot of games and he ends up winning everything that he's got, maybe there's going to be a differential there where somehow he ends up at, on 5th place. I'd have to look at the rankings right now. But uh, yeah, that's that was a really intense series. And that last match, I called the ending way too early. I, I just did, Monk. Yeah, sometimes it happens, you know, you just uh, blow your did, load did... off a little too early. Yeah, uh, thank you, Monk, for this gem. That being said, guys, on this awkward note, we're going to be back. We're going to be going for a 10 minutes break. We're going to be back with Colento versus Amaz as the last match of the day, and that should be quite interesting. We had to push it back uh, due to, you know, schedule restrictions, but we'll be right back. King Wynn is going to keep going, so don't move.